Well, good morning, everybody. So as per usual, we have a mix of people that are away, so they're zooming in, and people that are here in the sanctuary. It's a quieter day in the sanctuary right now, but I think we've gone from being the church of just in time to the church of right after the announcement, so we might have one or two more people show up. We'll see. Regardless of how you are joining us, welcome to Jackson Community Church. Um, quick wrap-up of announcements for the community. We had two walks yesterday. There was an Alzheimer's walk over in York, Maine, and then here at Cranmore Mountain, there was the Jen's Friends Walk. And according to our participants, Fred and Pam, uh, they made the mountain taller and it got longer and steeper than past years. And we know there were others that were giving to that walk, you know, to our team and cheering for them because we do have several families living with cancer in different forms and in different places on that journey. So both the Alzheimer's walk and the cancer walk really touch some of the struggles, challenges, and overcomings that our church community is living with in different ways. Well, we have people who have died due to Alzheimer's. We have people who are living with it actively now, either early onset or later onset. I don't know if that's a thing, but just different stages and, and people who are their partners, their loved ones who are supporting them in that journey. So thank you both to those who walked, to those who organized these events, and to those who supported uh, the Jen's Friends nonprofit makes a huge difference in this valley. We know several families who receive support from it. And the Alzheimer's organization has, is taking on you know, a challenge that is national and international in its scope. I don't have any other big announcements for the life of the church right now. Does anybody else have an announcement that you need to make for either the church or the community? Anybody in Zoom that need, has an announcement you need to make? Okay, I see that we are going to oh. migrate into our worship. So, Alan, if you would like to play us in, please, everybody that's here, whether you're here in Zoom or whether you're here in body, please relax your bodies, put your feet firmly on the ground, or sit in your favorite yoga position, whatever works for you, and just listen to the gift of music as we center ourselves. And now we enter worship with the call to worship. This is the calling out to God. We do this as a call and response. You can find it in your bulletin or you can find it up on the screen in front of you. This comes from Brother Thomas Merton, who was a, a Catholic in a Catholic order and a very contemplative person, but a deep philosopher and theologian. And his work continues to be highly relevant even now. Oh God, we are one with you. 
You have taught us that if we are open to one another, you dwell in us. Help us to realize that there can be no understanding where there is mutual rejection. And we adore you and we love you with our whole being. Fill us then with love. as we go our diverse ways. Love has overcome. Love is victorious. Amen. Now we invite prayers of our community and we begin with those that have been shared with us by our eight o'clock gathering outside or that have come in during the course of the week. Uh, a member of my family and Chris's family, uh, Kevin, who is our brother-in-law, his father, Michael, a very faithful man from Ireland, just died this week at the age of 93. Um, he is survived by children, grandchildren, and one great-grandchild. And he was straight from Ireland, from Cookhill County. Did I say that right, Irene? Cookhill County? Don't know where that is. Kavan? Cavan. OK, Cavan. Ah, oh, all right, near, near Irene from our own church. She, she grew up there. And two of his sisters were nuns. So a very, very faithful family, and Michael was a mighty and a gentle person in his family's life. And so we pray with gratitude for his life and with prayers for peace and comfort for his surviving family. We pray for Barbie Brown, who ended up in the hospital this week after a fall. Um, in odd ways, this will probably be a safe thing for her because she'll probably be released to a rehab as opposed directly home, which means that she'll be safer because she's less likely to be in danger of additional falls while she's rehabbing. And the intention is that she will be relocating to be with her family in Florida. So with love and concern for Barbie that this journey that she's on will continue to bring her to a place where she can be with those who love her and cherish her. And with thanks for the many wonderful neighbors and friends from Bartlett, from Glen Ledge area, who have been very active in helping her organize her life so that she can make this move. We pray for Sandy's family. Sandy, um, her cat Molly died this week and her cat was her companion and her beloved friend of 15 years. Right, let's go. Please bring the dogs in. Whoa, what was that? I don't know. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> um, okay. Little Holy Spirit there. And uh, Sandy's sister also had to had a pet who died this week. So pe people that whose family sometimes is their their pet this loss is tremendous it can be one of the hardest things that happens and so we don't take lightly the companionship and the presence of god's creatures in our lives nor what it means when they leave us and so with prayers of concern and sorrow and just solidarity for sandy and for her sister Those are the prayers of concern that I'm aware of. Are there other prayers of concern that anyone here in the congregation physically in the church would like to share? If so, Bob has the microphone and he can pass it to you. Anybody here? I'd like to share um, a prayer of concern to a very, very dear friend of Bob and mine. 
that we just found out yesterday she is suffering from a quite a severe blood disorder that has been making her very ill and she is in treatment and we wish nothing but her speedy recovery. But the other thing we're hoping for is that her husband and son get vaccinated for her safety. We love her very much and we hope everybody will pray for her. Do you want to share her first name? Wendy. So for a friend of Bob and Elizabeth's whose name is Wendy with a severe blood disorder and that those around her will contribute to her safety by making themselves safe so that COVID is not present in their home if possible. Any other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary? Bob? Uh, yeah, I'd like to offer a prayer up to, to those people who choose not to get vaccinated to help them realize that they're putting other people at risk. So prayers for safety within our community, that those who can help each other remain safe will do so. And prayers for those who for different reasons are unable to and remain at risk. And prayers for those who despite vaccination because vaccination does not prevent the pandemic or COVID, and people can still have it. And what we pray for is the vaccinations mitigate the symptoms so that people are not at such high risk. But right now, for instance, Jean, who's here in our congregation, her sister was released from the hospital after three small strokes because there were no beds available. They needed the rooms for people who need COVID care. So COVID is overwhelming different places right now, even now. And so prayers for Jean's sister, Linda, as she's been sent home with the aftermath of strokes and for places uh, like Memorial, where I was with Barbie this week, who say that they're having to care for people with very acute symptoms from other causes, strokes, cardiac things, because there are no beds they can send people to in other hospitals. Those units are full. So for the resilience of our medical community and for the ways that we can help not overwhelm our medical community. Other prayers of concern here in the church. Then please in Zoom, if anybody has a prayer concern, we invite you to unmute and share it and Sandy or Jeanette, if you see anybody, I'd appreciate you letting me know. I think we're good. Okay, it seems that it's a quiet day in Zoom for concerns. We will turn to gratitudes and then we will say a binding prayer for all these things. Before we turn to gratitudes, we will name those that we have continued to uphold in prayer. Scamp, Huntley, Mary, Sasha's granddaughter, and Sasha. Richard, Barry, John, and Jan, now we ask for prayers of celebration. So I'm hoping that since we warmed you up with sad news, Zoom folks, maybe you can come up with some happy news, gratitude or joy or celebration. Anniversaries and birthdays count. You can out people. I know at least one person who didn't acknowledge a birthday last week. I'm trying not to out people, but it's better if you tell me so I don't have to you know, focus on you. Um, we're going to start in Zoom, and then we'll move to the congregation. So anybody in Zoom who wants to, uh, Judy, go ahead. Yes, I'm happy because Wednesday I had my booster shot for COVID, so I've had three shots, so I should be good to go. <laughs> okay, so Judy's an example. Of, she has a suppressed immune system, and so they're encouraging people to have a booster shot, which is different than a third vaccination shot to separate topic, separate science. Slightly separate science. Other, Sandy? It uh, looks like Jennifer. Go ahead, Jen. Um, last weekend, I had the privilege of leading our, um, the Sulphur Grove Church that I'm with here, the women's retreat from like late Friday evening to 
Saturday around or Sunday around noon at Maria Stein, which is a retreat center up here or in Ohio. And um, it was just a God filled weekend. And it could have, it, it went better than what I expected, you know, for my first time ever leading. And it was just, it was all the women there, there were about um, 12 or 15 women and maybe 18. Yeah, 18. And they just all were just telling me how wonderful it was for them. And especially the first timers were just like, you know, this was just the best retreat I've ever been on. So it really made me feel good. So Jennifer, for gratitude for Jennifer's leadership and for the experience of having a fulfilling weekend with other women, and this is out in Ohio for anybody who's not sure. It's, uh, some of the people that are with us in Zoom are coming in from other states. Other prayers of gratitude or happiness, Jeanette? Yeah, I know you mentioned this, but I wanted to thank everyone who donated for the, the various walks. Um, this was the best year for fundraising for our team for the Alzheimer's walk. And so a, a huge, note of gratitude for those of you who did donate. And if you haven't had a chance to, it's not too late. You can still go on the Alzheimer's website and donate. So thank you very much. And as we said, several families have had people who died either due to Alzheimer's directly or it was one of the complications at the end of life. And so it makes a difference. It is near and dear to our hearts. So for the creativity of people that find a way to address these things. Um, is any other prayers of happiness out there in Zoom? Anybody happy out there for any reason? They're, they're all smiling, but they're like not saying anything. Yeah, you guys. All right, so this there better be a noisy congregation in the in the sanctuary then. Somebody's got to be noisy here. Okay, Lori's going to take the microphone. I'm pretty loud. Good. I don't think you need this. I just want to thank that little cute girl in the back of the room, Susan Kerrigan, for everything she does, but she just celebrated a birthday yesterday, so she needs to have a song. Uh, Are we ready? <laughs> okay, Lori's prompting us. We're going we're gonna to sing right in the middle of that thing. Okay, um, all right, so if we're going to do this, we're... we're um, Stay away from the microphone, stay muted if you're in Zoom, but we're going to, because this is not just for Sue, this is for everybody who within the, Barbie, and there were some other folks that were celebrating wonderful birthdays last Sunday and leading up till now. So Alan's going to play happy birthday. So now this is a prayer and a happy birthday all at the same time. So you. going to call that the September happy birthday song. You, a lot of churches do it like once a month for everybody who had a birthday. So if your birthday happened in September before or after today or on today, you, this is your birthday song. That was one of our more like on, uh, on key and we, we did pretty well today. That was actually pretty good. Other happinesses here in the sanctuary. That was a pretty good way to be loud. Lori, thanks for that. And Cheryl's going to give us a prayer. Okay, I just wanted to um, give a uh, prayer celebration for um, family, friends. Uh, we had two um, wonderful women visit our area uh, yesterday, uh, actually for uh, a few days. Um, they have been uh, friends of Tom's family for or with Tom for 62 years. Wow. So just being able to uh, keep that connection going and um, having them enjoy seeing, uh, this was their first time uh, to this area. So um, enjoying it through their eyes for the first time mm -hmm. was just uh, 
such a, a very neat thing. So for the joy of having friends come and visit, um, and I know one of them is an organist, and she came and tried out our organ. So, you know, our open 24-7 sanctuary gives people many ways to connect with music, with God, with self. Um, so thank you, Cheryl, for 62 years of friendship. That's amazing for Tom and the family. Other happinesses in the sanctuary. Okay, Wendy's happy. Thank goodness at least a few people are admitting they're happy. I know you're smiling, but still. Hi, just um, to say, I went to my 60th high school reunion last weekend. Oh, wow. And there were a big whole nine of us there. <laughs> <laughs> but people came from Florida and Ohio and wow. New Hampshire, and I graduated from school on the coast of Connecticut. So wow. that's where I'm from. And anyway, it was just a, a wonderful weekend, seeing old friends. That's so, so cool, Wendy. A, six, uh, a 60th high school reunion. Wow. Well, I'm going to name a couple other things that the 8 o'clock people were happy about. They were happy because of monarch butterflies, which are highly active right now, and you can see them all over the place. And anybody who reads the Conway Daily Sun, which is our local paper, saw the, this is a bumper crop, a record crop of apples, the best apple crop in 50 years in our area. And... Um, Lori Kinsey has a bunch of different kinds of apples, and she was saying, like, when you harvest them and what color they are and how you use them, and every tree is just plumped up with apples. So it's going to be fun to have cider and all kinds of goodness around here. We're going to have to think of at least one excuse to get together as a church. And I was thinking, like, a cider social. I know we're trying to be good and not be inside together, but maybe we can still come up with a chance to be outside and celebrate cider off the top of my head. So any other happinesses? Going once, going twice, appreciations, happinesses. OK, you guys, you're just awfully happy and smiley and quiet today. Then let us pray. We pray with gratitude that love bends its light towards us. That in this autumn of long purple shadows, when the heat of the sun still kisses your face and the coolness of the morning catches you off guard, we have the pleasure of the harvest, of the farm stands, of the fairs, of the cider and the applesauce and the apple crisp and the pumpkin everything and the sweet potato hash at J-Town Deli. The goodness of the earth all around us, the monarch butterflies, the bears, the chipmunks, whoever is annoying you or causing you to wonder right now, we give thanks for the chance to be connected to something bigger than ourselves and something which is holy, this creation that God touched and imagined and to which we tend and in which we live together. We give thanks for love that shows up as EMT and first responders, as neighbors that help to pack and paint and build and help somebody along the way on their journey, as people who love you through the sorrow of losing someone you love, and people who walk with you when you remember and try to make a difference for others, and for those who help you celebrate because someone you cherish is still among us for birthdays and anniversaries, for sobriety, for those that are holding on one day at a time, the way that love shows up and accompanies us in the living of our lives and the way we love each other. We give thanks. And we know that this love is present just not for us, but in the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in Zimbabwe in the villages in Honduras, in all of the places where people from Zoom are gathered here with us, where our children have set up their lives and our grandchildren are born in other parts of the world, across oceans, on different continents, or right next door. Love resides among us, and its expression and its living comes through us. This is what we lift up to the holy God that we share 
who calls us to be gathered this morning together. We offer into the silence that we will now give any other prayers that we have not said out loud. And we lift up our voices together, and I ask those in Zoom to unmute so that we may pray together the Lord's Prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, be thy, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be thy done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us, us, give us this day bread. our daily bread. And, and forgive us our sins. sins. We forgive those who forgive those those sin 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 against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we are gathered thinking about the gratitude of this world around us and its beauty and also what it means to be bound up together, let us sing this song, He's Got the Whole World in His Hands. If you're here in the sanctuary, please rise if you're able. And otherwise, at home, feel free to sing. And the words will be either up on the screen or it, they will be in your hymnal on page 97. And we're going, yeah, we're going to sing all four verses. We're going to have several short readings from scripture this morning. I didn't recruit anybody, so it's all my voice, so bear with. From Deuteronomy 6, verse 4, you've been hearing this for the last few weeks. Shema Ya Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. From 1 John chapter 4, verse 16, so we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. From 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 6, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. Again, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12 and verse 27, for just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Now you, you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. From the letter to Colossians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 17. He is the image of the invisible God, 
the firstborn of all creation, for in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And finally, from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 40, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. So end the readings. If you will, please join me in prayer. O holy God, from the love that unifies us and unites us, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The topic that we draw from the Shema today, because again, we're focusing on the Jewish prayer called the Shema, which begins in Deuteronomy from chapter six and becomes with Christ's translation of it, part of the two great commandments. You will love the Lord your God, and then you will love your neighbor as yourself. In that first sentence from Deuteronomy, we talked about the fact that the Shema, Shema Ya Israel, means to listen, pay attention, Israel, take notice. And in that taking notice, be prepared to respond to what you hear and what is brought to your attention. Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. The Lord is one. The Lord is one. Early com the commentators who talk about the early meaning of that prayer understand that in the middle of a world full of gods and a people that were sometimes in the Jewish diaspora that were taken by different conquerors to other places and also surrounded by kingdoms with gods of different names, they claimed the one God. And that so in the early application of this prayer, it is almost like a pledge of allegiance. It is stated to say, we are your people. You are our God. We choose you as you have chosen us. Among all gods, you are the God, the one God. It wasn't necessarily in its early days stated as some sort of theological understanding that there's only one unifying love or energy force in the whole world. They weren't trying to explain to us about what Christians have developed as the idea of the Trinity or the oneness of God. They were simply saying, Adonai is our God. This is the God we know. This is love as we have encountered love. And this love claims us and we claim it back. By the time of Jesus, this is a prayer that begins and ends the day. And it is the prayer, even if you say this one line on which we have been focusing, that you say with your last breath as you are dying. And if you can't say it, those around you say it for you, as I have said it in hospitals, in the intensive care unit when I was a medical chaplain for those of the Jewish faith when they were dying. One of the rabbis who talked about this prayer observed that this line begins with the listen, the responsive, active listening of Shema. In Hebrew, it means to be prepared to respond. You are being activated to reciprocate when your attention has been drawn to anything by God's presence or someone's prayer or how holy love is making itself known to you. And this prayer ends with the idea of oneness. 
What is oneness in the way this rabbi described it? She went on to talk about the fact that it doesn't mean we're all the same, because as we heard in the prayers from Corinthians, we are all members of different, of, we are all members of the same body, but we are different parts. We have different gifts and forms of service, and yet they are united and unified because they are activated by love, by holy love, which binds us together. And so part of oneness is, again, this recognition that when I see my neighbor, when I see the men and women in these pews, when I see the children that gathered on Friday night to imagine how we were going to put together the pumpkin people seen for the church, because there were several of us imagining it, we are seeing each other as members of one body, one community, one kingdom. And in Christ's commandment, it becomes a way of being unified because we do know that when we care for someone else, when we sing someone a song at the end of life, or when we walk with our neighbor out of remembrance and honoring and changing the world, or when we drop off a bag of apples or pack up a box or paint someone's wall or just show up with a phone call or a letter. What we do for each other, we are doing for Christ. If you can't see Christ in person, then know that when you see the body of your neighbor or your friend or the stranger that you stop to help, you are seeing the face and the body of Christ. God is showing up in your life saying, I need your help. I need your love. I need your connection. I am vulnerable right now. Be with me in this in whatever way you can. Oneness in some ways is this reciprocity of how we live together as a community now, not just in heaven, when we may be unified with holy love in ways we cannot even imagine, but here on earth. And it isn't easy. It's not easy to listen to someone who differs with you or who feels differently about masking or going to school or being remote or any of the things that seem to divide us. And yet we are a community that knows how through our differences, we can be stronger. And despite our differences, we can be neighbors and friends. And we see past the things that may divide us to the ways that we can love each other and continue to show up for each other. The rabbi also imagines that this oneness can be those encounters with holy love that are so pure that for a moment, you have a sense that you are connected to something bigger than yourself. And at the eight o'clock gathering, most of the time when people felt that they had been in that presence, it was because they were somewhere in nature, perhaps solitary for a little while, but in the purity of the world around them, they could experience something that they felt connected to that truly is holy. Most of us aren't going to walk through the world feeling like God is walking next to us or in us all the time. We're going to struggle and reach and try to grow to find those moments of true, deep connection. They are fleeting and rare, but Buddhists seek them towards a sense of enlightenment. Rumi and people in Islam, especially the mystics, reach for it as a sense of being folded into the oneness of God's self and being in that presence so that they dissolve into the light, into that love, and they don't know where the boundary is between themselves and what is holy. Perhaps we won't always get to that deep place of dissolving and connecting, but we will. We will know love and connection and oneness in the way that we love each other and the way we are community for each other. The children who gathered on Friday, the young people with the great imaginations who gathered on Friday chose not to worry about the rest of the autumn. We picked 
two days and we're going to work on pumpkin people. And of all the themes that they could choose, they chose make a joyful noise. They chose to represent a jazz band. And so each of them is creating a character out of pumpkins that will be part of the jazz band. And there's going to be a tiny mini pumpkin chorus. And there's going to be a way for other people to add their songs to the playlist of the jazz band so that your prayers become interactive. If you need to know what oneness is, Look at the keyboard that Alan plays or imagine the band that the children are creating for us, that the young people are creating for us. They are showing us that one person can make music, but people together, a community, a band, a team that walks, a medical unit that responds, the scientists that imagine how we will respond to the pandemic one alone does not do the work. We do it together. A group, a chord of keys, a band of instruments and the fingers that play them and the voices that become the choir. We do it together and we experience oneness when we are bound up together by music, by causes, by response to emergencies or by cooking together or being creative together or singing together, whatever we do. Oneness is within our reach because we have it together, bound up and moved by love. When I read to you one last time the prayer, and it concludes and it says, the Lord our God is one. Love is one, uniting us, unifying us, bringing us into reciprocity. Imagine the ways that you have been in connection to oneness and how you contribute to and are part of oneness for others. Shema Ya Israel, El Donai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Hero Israel. The Lord is our God. The Lord is one. Thanks be to God. Anybody who can see a bulletin, which is nobody in Zoom, but everybody in the church, will be able to peek ahead and know that we're putting the doxology back in the service. I went to a service two weeks ago and realized that I hadn't participated in the doxology since COVID began. And it feels like a homecoming to share these parts of a service that I hope is familiar to most of you. Got a little feedback going there, Alan. It is? Doesn't sound okay. All right, we're going to... Uh, we're going to adjust the, the keyboard just a little bit because we got a little feedback. Now it seems to be going away. Um, we're going to sing this as we think about the offering. And so let me just remind you again, as I do every week, and you have been faithful. Our church is fiscally healthy and has been throughout this pandemic because people continue to make a commitment. They have made pledges regular contributions, they give what's in their pocket when they're in the pew, they put it in an envelope, or people make a, a recurring donation through jxncc.org. However it is that people are giving, the regularity of what you have done has helped us remain sustainable and to continue operations even when we can't all be together. But we have been open and we have been gathering for over a year. Sometimes it was only two people in the sanctuary with me, but we have been part of this community regardless of the week or the condition, even when we couldn't meet physically, our doors were open and we were gathering and we were out among our neighbors being part of the response to the original onset of the pandemic. 
All right, we're going to give it a whirl. So if you're here in the sanctuary, please rise if you're able. Otherwise, you'll find the words, the doxology on your screen, and Alan will play it for us. Praise God. him i'm just going to say that we ask that god shall bless our gifts the diversity of what they are and the ways that they are put to the work of god's love in this world and they become unified in the ways that love is expressed in the lives of those who need that love <laughs> benediction together and then we're going to ask people to go in peace with the idea of apples on their lips and their tongues and in their hearts <laughs> Brothers and sisters, go with the love of God in your hearts and in your hands and in your feet, in the way that you speak and how you choose to be with each other. And know that when you go with this peace, you go with God's peace, and you are the agents of peace in the world. Amen. <laughs> 